Hello students, how are you? This is your teacher, Sir Harish Pat, And today, again, we are going to solve the third question uh, from the paper, October, November, 2024, question three. October, November, 2024, question three, which has just arrived two days back, right? So I'm going to solve the question paper in front of you. And we have already, I have already solved two questions, one and two. And the third one is from company that is the most important question and most difficult one also, most important and the most difficult one also, undoubtedly, right? So please subscribe my channel, Learn Accounting with Sir Harris. Follow me on Instagram and on my Facebook also. And feel free to ask any question. If you have anything uh, uh, you are desirable or anything you want to ask regarding the paper, grade threshold or anything, you are welcome to contact me on my WhatsApp number 0333-471-2897. So let's move forward for the third question. A draft profit of L public limited company for the year ended 30th June was calculated at 58340. So the profit is given 58340. The director have discovered some errors in the accounting records. The draft profit had been calculated before correcting the following. So the draft profit has been calculated before correcting the following. So we have to correct the profit and then we have to find the corrected profit actually from this question, which is given. It made the revised profit for the year. So I'll write in front of you so the uncorrect profit is going to be how much that is let me write incorrect profit that is 58340 if I'm right right 58340 okay now I'll move on forward closing inventory had been overstated by 2100 closing inventory we have written the closing inventory more than its actual value that is overcast closing inventory is an asset it is debited when it is debited more than by 2800, we have to give it a credit because when something is written more than its actual amount, it will be written on the opposite side with the additional or extra amount. That debit side is going to be suspense of this. So this is how we are going to go for this entry. But having said this, when we start believing that closing inventory has been overstated by 2800, so always remember that it will come on both sides actually. On both sides of the picture, it will come like, let me make it clear, like cost of sales has also been overstated and closing inventory has also been overstated. So the entry is going to be not suspense, cost of sales debit and closing inventory credit. Why I have done that? Because this is the common mistake students used to do. When closing inventory has been overstated, you will pass the entry because because of overstated, because of the closing inventory has been overcast, but will affect the cost of sale will decrease. And now we have to increase the cost of sale. The cost of sale will be debited and closing inventory will be credited because of the current asset is going to decrease. So closing inventory is the current asset, decrease in current asset credit and cost of sale needs to be increased. Cost of sale is going to be debited. Now, increase in cost of sales will decrease in will result in decrease in profit. Because of the increase in cost of sales, profit will decrease, obviously, which we haven't done actually, because that has been overstated and the effect of correcting the profit has not been done. It's another way out. If any item relating to income statement is basically debited in the rectifying entry, profit will decrease. Or if any item is going to be credited, profit will increase. So I will write over, over here, closing inventory, overstated, overstated, and what will I will do? It will be subtracted, and the amount is 2800. Next is, return outwards 570 had been debited to purchase the account. Let me do that for you. Yes, 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 that's important. Return outwards have been debited to purchase the account. So what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to credit the return output. Return output is always going to be having a right, purchase return. But instead of crediting purchase return, because purchase return is always credited, we have debited purchases. Now, first of all, we'll correct the mistake. Purchases are wrongly debited. We need to give it a credit. Then we didn't record return output. It will be recorded on that side in which it is required to be recorded because that is not wrong. That is supposed to be recorded on the side in which it has to be recorded, that is with 570. And the debit side, we are going to write the suspense account. 
obviously he didn't ask us to prepare the entries but we do that we will do them so that there should not be any chance of error right with the double amount okay now let's do that over here the correction because both the things both the purchases and return outwards are going to be credited it will increase profit both because of the both things purchases and because of purchase return right because purchases are going to be credit, it means that expense is decreasing and decrease in expense will increase profit. Purchase return is going to be credit, it means that again, it will be treated as an income or decrease in purchases, you may say. Again, expense is decreasing actually. So it will increase in profit. But having said this, if you are finding any kind of confusion in answering the question, I have already given you an idea. Any account which relates to the income statement. If in the rectifying entry it is credited, this both comes in the income statement, it will increase profit. Any account, either expense or income, if it is debited, it will decrease profit. GG suspense spelling has wrong, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We are not looking for spelling, we are looking for the understanding of the question. Distribution cost including the payment of 4320 for advertising covering the three year ending 31st March 2027. Currently, we are in 2024. So it means <clears throat> that we have this 4320 of distribution cost, which has been included in the distribution cost, relates to 24 to 20, uh, sorry, 31st March 2024, then 225, 25 to 26, and 26 to 27. Right? These are the th three years. But our period, which comes in our year, is will start from April, May, and June, only three months. So only three months period, three months distribution cost should be a part of the expenses. But instead of three months, we have gone for recording of 36 months distribution cost with the amount which is, is 4320. So it means that three months we have recorded 36 months distribution. Let, let, me, let me give you an example. So there. Uh, you might be able to understand it more appropriately. This 4320 is total amount is for three years. Distribution cost is for three years, right? That's true. Okay. Three years becomes three into 12, 36 months. So you will divide it with 36 to get distribution cost for one month. 4320 divided by just a minute, divided by 36. So that becomes 120. Now the period for which our financial year is ended, that is going to end on 30th June. So if we are going for the three year distribution cost, three year payment has been included, 36 months payment has been included. Only three months is a part of, only three months distribution cost is a part of our financial year expense. So 33 months, 33 months distribution cost is basically prepaid. So let me write it down. So it means that 4320 multiplied by 33 divided by 36. And that amount is going to be the prepaid distribution cost, which is not related with our period, which is not an expense in the period in which it is it, it was it is recorded wrongly. We have recorded 43T0 out of which 3960 does not relate to distribution cost expense because that relate to the next year. That is prepaid. It should not be recorded. So how we are going to record it? You may ask, might ask me, then sir, why you write 120? I tell you. Because 120 multiplied by 3, that is our expense. That is 360. We have recorded 4320, but the expense which should have been included in distribution cost should be 360. So 4320 minus 260, the remaining amount is 3960, which is prepaid. You will pass the entry. You will pass the entry. The entry is going to be, that is prepaid distribution cost and distribution expense is going to be credited by 3960 because we need to decrease the distribution cost and we will treat it as an asset. That is, a, that is an, as an asset because we have paid the amount, but we haven't utilized it still now. It is supposed to be. Now, in the entry, expense is credited. So when expense is credited, it means the profit will increase. So we will add 
distribution cost prepaid. Right? So the amount is going to be prepaid spelling is wrong, no matter, doesn't matter at all. 3967. So the profit, corrected profit, I must say, is going to be how much? 58340. Uh, that is going to be minus 2800 <coughs> plus 1540. And the distribution cost that has been included a payment for advertising expense for advertising covering the three years ending 31st March 2027. It means 26 to 27 is not, it should not be a part of the expense of 30th June 2024. 25 to 26 should not be a part of the expense also. 24 to 25 should not be a part of the expense except for the three months. Three months distribution cost is, a, is our expense of 360. But we have included, not 360, we have added 4320. So we have to decrease the distribution cost and we and we are decrease the distribution curve, the profit will increase. So the amount answer is going to be 58340 minus 2800 plus 570 plus 570 or plus 3960. So 60640 is the answer. So please write it down as quickly as possible because I will move forward. 60640 is the corrected profit or the word which has been used in the question is revised profit, I'll use that. Okay, so the revised profit is going to be 6060640. Okay, now let's move on. That is from the errors actually, the part is from the errors. Now let's move on. Now we are going to go for the, the share capital comprised of public and limited company comprised of a share of 0 0.5 per share, right? 0 0.5 each. So one share, the price of par value, face value, nominal value is 0.5 each. 31st August paid a final dividend of 0 0.05 per share on all shares in issue at that date. 31st December made a bonus issue of one ordinary share for every seven share held, seven ratio one. The director decided to leave the reserve in the most flexible plan. 31st March paid an interim dividend of 2% on all shares in issue at that date. 31st March made a right issue of one ordinary share for every four, four ratio one at a premium of 0.2. So the per share price is 0.5, but we are basically issuing right share at a premium of 0.2 becomes it has been issued at 0.7. Offer price is 0 0.7, 0 0.5. Face value plus 0 0.2, 0.7. Property was revalued downward by 8,000. So that is revaluation downward. When there is a revaluation downward, we will take out that particular loss from revaluation reserve if it is available. And the remaining amount will be subtracted from retained earnings. Yes, first we'll use share, premium, share revaluation reserve. And then the remaining amount will be taken out from retained earnings. The value of ordinary share capital was 2 lakh. That we the value of ordinary share capital at 1st July. So let's do it. First of all, you should be able to know that the number of shares which is currently available at the end, we have to go reverse. This is a reverse question. And that has come in February, March 24. And our variant, it has come in May, June 21. Again, 2024. And again, it has come in October, November 2024, variant 22. So because that is a complex question, so it's coming again and again. So number of years, if you talk about, that is 2 lakh divided by 0.5 because we have been told in the question, the first line was that, that the value of per share, one share is 0.5, right? So we can now easily tell that because at the end, on 30th June 2024, at the end of the year, the value of the share capital is 2 lakh. So we can we can find the number of share at the end of the year, that is 4 lakh share. 4 lakh shares, shares, not the amount, they are shares. Then how did you know that? Check it out again. Because the, the question is, examiner is asking us to prepare a statement of changes in equity. And you can write it down over here, that the 2 lakh is the amount of share capital at the end of the year. And we have to go reverse all the way through to find the share capital Balance at 1st July 2023. This is the basic and most difficult part of the question. It has come in the past very often. So number of shares at the end is 4 lakh. Now, in this 4 lakh shares, 
you can see that we have in this four lakh shares we have we have issued the right shares and right shares have been issued after adding the right shares the shares are four lakh right and how right shares are issued one share for every four held at a premium of 0.2 per share and right share were fully subscribed it means that four lakh shares if we suppose that the shares before right shares i'm again saying the shares but whatever we have number of shares before the issue of right shares are x then x plus x over x plus x over 4 is going to be our total number of shares right now that is 4 lakh how come sir okay let's suppose let shares before before right share shares before right share is equal to x Beta, what are the right share then right shares will be just in there right share is going to be that is 4 over 1 so that is going to be x over 4 multiplied by 1 so it will be obviously x over 4 these are the right shares so right shares plus whatever the shares before right shares were that is x x plus right shares is equal to the total amount of shares which we are having at the end of the year that is 4 lakh shares not 2 lakh 2 lakh is the amount Divide by 0.5, 4 lakh shares. Now we can simplify this. So this will become, this is 1x actually, because you know maths, 1x plus 0.25x. Or how come 0.25? Because x over 4 means 1 over 4x, and 1 over 4 is 0.25. You can calculate it through decimal in fraction also, no matter. So that is 1.25x. 1.25x is equal to 4 lakh, so x is equal to 4 lakh divided by 1.25, right? So we can get the divided by 1.25. So 3 lakh 20,000 shares we have before right shares, right? So let shares before right shares were how much? They were uh, x, so right shares will be x over 4 into 1, that is x over 4. So, right shares before right shares plus right shares is equal to the total number of shares currently held by the company on 30th June, that is 4 lakh. So, x means the shares before right shares are 3 lakh 20,000 and after right share, the total shares are 4 lakh. So, it means the right shares is going to be 80,000. And if you go, if you want to pass the entry, you will be more clear about it. That bank is going to come with 80,000 into 0.7. So how come? Because 0.5 is the amount of share capital. And the right shares are issued at a premium of 0.2 over here. So 0.7 is the amount of share. And the total amount is going to be 56,000. Then share capital is going to be created with the face value. 80,000 into 0.5, right? And that is going to be, obviously 80,000 into 0.5, that is going to be 20,000. And the share premium, and that is going to be 80,000 into 0.2, and that is going to be 16,000. So this is how we have passed the entry of right shares even. Rather than the calculation, I've passed the entry for right shares also. So that it, I, I might use it in the statement of changes in equity because I've seen but I have to prepare the statement of change in equity also. I repeat again. Yes, I can understand it's a difficult part. Let me make you clear again. The number of shares we have at the end of the financial year is 2 lakh. No, that is the amount of share capital. The number of shares are going to be 2 lakh divided by 0.5 because the face value of the share is 0.5. So 4 lakh shares we have at the end of the year. After issuing bonus shares, and after issuing right share, we have 4 lakh shares. So let that shares before right shares are x. So right shares will be x over 4. So shares before right shares plus right shares equal to 4 lakh. So shares before right shares are 3 lakh 20,000 20, shares. And after right share, total shares are 4 lakh. It means that we have issued 80,000 right shares. At 0.5, which is the amount of share capital. And 0.2 is the amount of share premium. 
So bank amount will be 80,000 into 0.7, which is not supposed to be written anywhere else. That's true. Which is not supposed to be written anywhere else. That's true. Right? I've written actually share capital. I have written the wrong amount. That's why I'm correcting it. Because 80,000 into 0.5 will become 40,000. Sorry. Just a calculation mistake. And the premium is going to be 16,000. Right? The share capital is 40,000. 80,000 into 0.5. And premium is 80,000 into 0.2. That is 16,000. Right? So, sir, what was the question? Oh my God. Yes. We have to find the share capital on 1st July starting. So, we have to move further behind. Sir, how come? On 31st December, before the right shares, we have issued bonus share, one for every seven shares held at that date. So we, and that is from the most flexible form, one for seven. So, again, let's suppose that the shares at start is equal to x. So, bonus shares is going to be how much? x over 7. Obviously, x over 7. Or you may say x over 7 into 1. It's one and the same thing. So, it means that 320,000 shares which we have uh, which we have after Sorry, which we have before issuing right shares, we have the share of 320,000, which includes bonus shares actually. 320,000 are the shares which includes bonus shares. Why? Because after 320,000, we have shares. We have shares. We have issued share, which we have issued right shares of 80,000 to become total amount of shares to get total amount of shares of 4 lakh. So 320,000 is equal to X, the share at the start, plus the bonus share that is x over 7. So now we are going to solve it. Right? That 1x this is if we take an LCM, LCM of this 7 is the LCM and this 7x plus x becomes 8x over 7. Right? So I can write it down. 3 lakh 20,000 is equal to 8x over 7. Now 7 will be multiplied by going there x is equal to 3 lakh 20,000 multiplied by 7 divided by 8 and you will get the amount of shares at the start. Number of shares at the start, not the amount. Number of shares at the start divided by uh, divided by sorry, one of which multiplied by 7 just a minute 3 lakh 20,000 multiplied by 7 divided by 8 and you will get 2 lakh 80,000. So the shares at the start are going to be 2,80,000 shares. But we want an amount of amount of share capital at the start. So share capital at the start or at or at 1st July 2023 is going to be 2,80,000 shares obviously multiplied by 0.5 that is going to be 1,40,000. So that is the answer. Though we have just three marks for that, but what can I do? We have to go for such kind of a calculation. There is some other way out also. But I believe that for, for a student who have never studied uh, maths to a greater extent, they should go for that type of a calculation that will make you your understanding more easy. The so one like 40,000 is the share capital at the start. I hope so that you got the point. Even if you have some problem, you can ask me directly on my WhatsApp number. I will explain it again to you. Now we are going to go for the statement of change in equity, which is the requirement of the question. In spite of going for the statement of change in equity on the on the same uh, you know paper, I will do it on my ordinary share capital. Then we have share premium. Then we are going to have the revaluation reserve. This is given in the question. Then I think so general reserve is not given. If I'm not wrong, let me check it out. Because he has given all the amounts here. Yes, it is not given. Retained earnings are given. So I will write retained earnings here. 
Okay. Now here I'm going to write the balance or whatever is written first July amount. We have calculated the ordinary share capital that is one lakh forty thousand now. Share premium is given nineteen thousand two hundred. Revaluation reserve is sixty five hundred. Eighteen thousand four hundred is going to be the retained earnings. So nineteen thousand two hundred share premium. Then sixty five hundred revaluation reserve. And the retained earnings are going to be eighteen thousand four hundred. So I'm going to write here eighteen thousand four hundred. Okay. And then there is the total also. So let's go for the total also because the total column is given. So it is better always it's, it's better to write that total column or prepare the total column also. So this is how all the things have given over here only, not over there. Okay. So let's uh, see the question. What is the requirement of the question? First, he has already given us that you are basically paying the final dividend. So let's see that how final dividend has been paid here. On 31st August, paid a final dividend of 0 0.05 per share on all share in issue at that date. Always remember that on 31st August, we haven't issued any new shares, neither the bonus share nor the right shares. So the shares which are available on 31st August are going to be how many? They are 280,000 shares. And the dividend is, final dividend is 0.5. Final dividend is 0.5. So I can calculate here. 280,000 shares. Sir, where from it has come? My God. First of all, we have been given the 2 lakh amount of share capital at the end. We have calculated the number of shares. We have gone reverse to find the shares before the issue of right share. 3 lakh 20,000. From there, we find the right shares, which are 80,000. We have passed the entry. And then from 3 lakh 20,000, it includes the bonus share. We have gone again reverse. And to find the share at the start, there are two like eighty thousand, and we can find the bonus share also. Three like twenty thousand minus two like eighty thousand is going to be the bonus share. You can write here also. Three like twenty thousand. Let me write it down. We can calculate it also actually. Minus two like eighty thousand. That is going to be the right share. So that is forty thousand amount is going to be the right share. I will calculate it all the way through again. No problem. Okay. So the share capital at the start is 2 lakh 80,000 shares into 0.5, 1 lakh 40,000 shares we have at the start. Now final dividend is 2 lakh 80,000 multiplied by 0.05. So what amount you will get as far as final dividend is concerned? Let me go for the calculation. And the final dividend amount is going to be 14,000. Okay, 2 lakh 80,000 into 0.05. And you will subtract it from here, final dividend. It is a negative sign because it needs to be subtracted from the final dividend, needs to be subtracted from the total actually. And the total of uh, the capital given is 184100 over here. Total is 184100. I have calculated. I will also write over here that is 14,000 because whatever you are writing, in other columns, you have to take total along with that. Let's next is what he is asking in the question. We'll go for it. That is bonus share, then interim dividend, and last he has written the profit for the year. So let's talk about the bonus shares now. So bonus shares are basically issued one for seven. We have already calculated the amount of bonus shares, but I will do the calculation again for you just to make you understand that we have gone reverse, but we have gone reverse. In the correct manner. So shares given are 2 lakh 80,000, 1 lakh 40,000 is the amount, and divide by 7 into 1 is the amount. So the amount of share is going to be 40,000 multiply by 0. 0.5. So the bonus shares is going to be 20,000. Right? So 20,000 is going to be the bonus shares. Okay. And from where the amount is going to be taken for this bonus share in the most flexible form. So we will take out this amount from share premium. So the whole share premium will be finished. 19,200 is the amount of share premium, which we will take out. And the remaining it will be taken from retained earnings, not from revaluation reserve, because revaluation reserve will not be used anymore for bonus shares. 
So 1800 is going to be taken from 1800 over here. I will subtract because bonus share is not something which has been utilized or shares have been issued for cash. It is the capitalization of reserves. We have subtracted some amount from reserves and put it into the share capital, also known as capitalization of reserves. Conversion of reserves into share capital. Then paid an interim dividend of 2% on all share issue if it is given like that. Interim dividend, right share, revaluation and profit. I'll write all three. Interim dividend. Interim dividend is going to be how much? That is going to be 2% on all share issue at that date. 2% on all share issue at that date. Then there is right shares. Then he has asked us to write the mm, not. Let me check it out so that we might not do anything wrong. Revolution, yes. And then revolution downward is going on. And then there is going to be the profit which we need to write. Just yeah. Okay. So in term dividend is 2% on all share in issue. 2%. Right? Per share dividend is something else. And percentage needs to be calculated on the amount of share capital. So the amount of total amount of share capital at the time of interim dividend is going to be 140,000 plus 20,000, that is 160,000 into 2%, right? 160,000 into 2%. So the interim dividend amount is going to be 6,400. 6 to 12. 3200, I believe, not 6400. Is it 2% or 4%? That needs to be calculated on the amount of that is going to be 3200. And that will be subtracted from retained earnings. Remember that we have to calculate it percentage on the amount of share capital, not on per share. Let's look at it. On all share issue at that age, 2% on the amount of share capital. It is not per share. This is given per share. Final dividend was per share. And the number of shares were different. Okay. So let's go for the next. Right shares we've already calculated. How, how come? You can calculate it again. 1,60,000. 1,60,000. Like 1,60,000. Like divided by 4. Right. That will become 40,000. And 40,000 into. Sorry. 1,60,000 like divided by. Uh, what is the yes one like sixty thousand is the amount of share capital. So when you divide it by 0. 0.5, you will get two lakh three lakh twenty thousand are the shares, and then over four you will get eighty thousand shares, which you have done already. And the share capital is eighty thousand to 0. 0.5, that is forty thousand is the amount of share capital, and twenty thousand sixteen thousand is going to be the share premium. Kaise? How come? 40,000, 80,000 into 0. 0.5 is the amount of share capital and 80,000 into 0. 0.2 is the amount of share premium, which is 16,000. And that will also come in total like retained earnings. That is 3,200. And over here, I will write 56,000, the total amount. Revaluation downward is going to be there. And how much did that? Property was revealed down by 8,000. Property was revealed downward by 8,000. When there is a revolution downward, we take the amount from revolution reserve first and the remaining amount will be taken from retained earnings. So 6,500 will be taken from over here and 1,500 will be taken from the retained earnings and revolution downward has been gone and 8,000 I will subtract from the retained earnings also. Because the amount of the, you know, amount of, sorry, asset amount has been, property has been decreased by 8,000. The value of the property has been decreased by 8,000. Right? Next is going to be our profit for the year. So the profit we have already calculated in the previous example, that is, that is going to be how much? Uh, I have calculated actually, but I think so. It is not shown over here. So let me calculate it. Uh, not shown here. Okay. So let me calculate it again. No problem. I will calculate it through the entries again. 
So the uncorrect profit is if I remove behind. I hope so. You will be having it. Five eight three four zero. Five eight three four zero. Then uh, cost of sales. Uh, you will subtract minus twenty eight hundred. Then plus five seventy plus five seventy, and then you will plus three nine six zero. The profit is six zero six four zero. Oh, I I I do remember that actually, but just forgot it. Six zero. It will be added because it will increase profit, and in total also six zero six four zero. And this is how we have completed the statement of changes in equity. You can say that this is going to be the most difficult question. I can understand your viewpoint. Total share capital at the end of the year is two lakh now. One lakh forty plus twenty one sixty plus forty. That is two lakh. Share premium is going to be sixteen thousand because of the right shares. Devaluation reserve will be zero nil. Retained earnings we have to calculate. Let me calculate the retained earnings. That is going to be eighteen thousand four hundred minus fourteen thousand uh, minus eighteen hundred minus thirty two hundred minus fifteen hundred and plus six zero six four zero five eight five four zero. The five eight five four zero is going to be the answer. Of the retained earnings, five eight five four zero, and if you go for the total, you will get the whole answers five eight five four zero plus two lakh sixteen thousand. That is two seven four two seven four five four zero two seven four two seven four five four zero is the total equity. I will calculate it again so that I must be very clear that I have gone for the right solution, right? So this is the most difficult question, and that is a very difficult question because we have to go reverse to find right shares and bonus shares. Then the dividend calculation is of two types. Final dividend is basically given as per share dividend, but the interim dividend is given as the percentage on the total amount of shares. So that is a difficult part. Then again, for calculation of interim dividend, you have to calculate uh, the number of uh, Sorry, the amount actually, not the number of shares. Amount is one sixty thousand, and the amount two percent of that amount is going to be the our interim dividend, right? So this is how we have solved this particular question, and uh, let me make some changes. So this is the end of the question. Actually, thank you very much. Inshallah, we I'll come with the fourth question of October November two thousand twenty four variant twenty two. Thank you very much. Ask me any problem. If there is any problem, you can ask me directly on my WhatsApp number zero triple three four seven one two eight nine seven. Thank you.